Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric Sun, and I'm an incoming first year medical student at McMaster University. Today, I'll be going through my essential tips and tricks for MCAT studying and scheduling. This is part two of my MCAT strategy series. So if you haven't seen part one yet, check out this link up here. Make sure to remember to leave a like and smash that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. So tip number one, progressive overloading. Progressive overloading is a gym term where you make your task harder and harder every single week to increase the intensity, but also keep the task manageable still. So in the gym, that might look like adding a little bit more weight every single week, but you can also apply this method to studying. In fact, it's actually one of the best study methods I use to avoid burnout. Remember that you're in it for a marathon with the MCAT. You want to maintain a slow and consistent pace towards that finish line. You don't want to sprint and burn yourself out in the first two weeks of studying. Start small and build up. For example, if you're studying for cars, you can start with a single passage with no time pressure. As you gradually improve your reading speed and comprehension, you can start to progressively overload, adding in a little bit more work every single time you practice while still making it manageable. For example, you could look to do multiple passages at a time, or you could add that time pressure in, or you can make that time pressure so that you have to go even faster. If you want a detailed guide on how to study for car success, check out this other video that I've included here. You're always mildly uncomfortable by the challenge of progressively overloading, but it's also realistic because it's just a little bit more work so that you can maintain that for long-term success. This will also help with another crucial part of MCAT success, stamina. By slowly adding to your workload, your test-taking stamina will gradually improve over time. I would imagine that most people have never written a test for seven and a half hours before, so that's something that you can only improve with lots and lots of practice. Even this year, though it's been shortened to five and a half hours, it's still an incredibly long test and would be tiring for anyone. Just like how you wouldn't go into a full-blown marathon without the right training, you wouldn't go into the MCAT without the right training and stamina as well. Tip number two, study proportionally. The MCAT tests a lot of topics, but it doesn't test them equally. Topics that are high yield will show up a lot more than those that are low yield. You want to be preparing yourself to get as many questions right as possible. The best way to do that is to use your time efficiently and focus on the high yield topics before the low yield ones. Make sure to study according to how many questions are going to be on your test. For example, if we look at the breakdown provided by the AAMC, the Biological and Biochemical Foundations of Living Systems section, or the bio section, we can see that biochemistry, biology, general chemistry, and organic chemistry are all tested. But biology is 65% of the section whereas biochemistry is only 25, and organic and general chemistry are even lower at 5% each. If we use our framework of studying proportionally based on the topics in the section, our most important topic would be biology. Subjects like organic chemistry and chemistry, although important for the chem section, aren't as important and relevant here. For example, you could be spending hours upon hours memorizing those organic chemistry reactions, but if only one shows up on your actual test, then all of that studying wouldn't have been very helpful. On the other hand, if we study a lot for biology, we're very confident in the fact that a lot of biology is gonna show up on the test and we can maximize the number of questions we get correct. That's why understanding a breakdown of the sections is so crucial to success. If you wanna check out a detailed list of the breakdowns in each section, check out my study schedule down below in the description. In the second tab, I've included a few graphs on the section breakdowns to help you maximize your time studying the important subjects to get more questions right. Tip number three, how to fix study boredom. If you find that you're feeling really bored or if you're really struggling with the topic, try switching up topics, come back to it later and do something else in the meantime. For me, I don't really like physics that much. So then after I do a little bit of physics, I try to study biology, something I do like. Physics isn't something I particularly enjoy or am really good at, but biology is something I really like instead. Jumping around with the material you're studying helps keep it interesting. And it also has actually been shown to help you understand the material better by connecting different ideas. It also gives you something to look forward to. Instead of reviewing physics all day and making myself absolutely miserable, I would also add in a little bit of biology at the end to try to give myself something to look forward to. When you have a reward after something difficult, you might actually start to like doing whatever you found challenging before. Another great benefit of this is actually that if you're mixing up the subjects that you're studying, 
you're never gonna run into the problem of studying one single subject too early on. If you were to do, say, all of physics before moving on to biology, by the time you do practice questions, you might have had two months out since you last studied physics. In that time, you might have forgotten a lot of what you reviewed and have to review it again. By mixing and matching what you're studying, you're keeping things fresh in your head every single time you visit it. So give that a try. Put something that you really like studying or prefer studying after something that you find really difficult or really struggle with. Tip number four, study in groups. Find one or two people that are also studying for the MCAT around the same time as you. Try to make sure that group doesn't get too big because the bigger you make your group, usually the less productive it tends to get. Studying with a very small core group helps keep you motivated, focused, and accountable. If you're checking in with one another, you can help to make sure that you're all still on the right track and making good progress. Sometimes it's really easy to tell yourself, oh, I'll just do that tomorrow. But if you have to tell that to someone else, there's that subconscious feeling of guilt that you're letting someone else down. So you actually tend to do it more often and be more productive. Additionally, when you're studying for the same thing as other people, you can also share resources as well as tips and tricks like the ones found in this video. When you find a topic that you're really struggling with or a concept that you just can't understand, a friend might be there to explain it to you. When your friend is struggling, you can help explain it to them and reinforce your own understanding of that topic. If you're both struggling, then you'll have someone else to help you work through that problem instead of struggling through it by yourself. Also to use another gym analogy, whenever I go to the gym with a friend, my competitive drive always pushes me to lift a little more or run a little bit faster. If you and your friend are both competitive, you might push each other to succeed and end up both doing better as a result. No matter how you look at it, you're probably gonna be better off with one or two people that you can study with and depend on. If you can't find that core group of people, especially now that we're all stuck inside virtually, there are tens of thousands of people online in pre-med communities such as Reddit, as well as pre-med 101 that you could study with. Turning to virtual study groups would be a great way to study together while keeping everyone safe inside. Tip five, recreate test day conditions. Try to do practice tests just like you would on the actual test day. It'll help you get used to when you need to wake up as well as the timing you'll need to do well on the test, starting with waking up. Normally every year, the tests begin at 8 a.m. and that's already early enough. With this year and the introduction of three different time slots, 6.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., as well as 6.30 p.m., you're gonna need to readjust your sleep schedule so that you can wake up and be fully awake no matter when your test is, but especially if you're at 6.30 a.m. Now, about getting used to the test day conditions. You don't get your phone or any electronics for obvious reasons. They don't want you to cheat, but they also don't want you to get distracted. So when you're doing practice tests, turn off your phone, find a quiet place where you can study, maybe find a pair of earplugs so that you don't get distracted, and make sure that you recreate the test day conditions as much as you can. Time yourself and make sure that you can readjust to go faster or slower in the section based on how quickly you're going right now. Also make sure to take the breaks as they're given in the actual test. You don't want to be spending extra time in the bathroom that might eat away at your test taking time. If you take a longer break than you're given, your test might actually just start without you, giving you less time and more stress. Tip six, should I spend all of my time studying? The short answer is no, definitely not. Do not focus every single second of your life on studying. It's not sustainable, you'll work yourself to death, and you'll be absolutely miserable. That combination of three things will actually probably make your score lower. When I was studying for the MCAT, I spent a lot of time focusing on getting back into shape, as well as involving myself in a team sport throughout the summer. During the weekdays, I would take two to three hours every single day, either going to the gym, reading, or relaxing, and I would never take the weekends to study either. Having some time to work on myself and giving me a little peace of mind and clarity to reflect on what I needed to do better allowed me to return to studying recharged and ready to learn. Make sure you're taking enough breaks for yourself and make sure you're still doing the things you love. Remember that the MCAT is just a single part of your med school application. That number that you get at the end doesn't define your whole story. You should be focusing on doing other activities in the summer as well, instead of just studying. Also, one other important thing to mention is that it's not always about how much time you spend studying, but how effective that quality of studying really was. Make sure that if you say you're studying for four hours today on physics, you're not actually spending two hours on physics and two hours on your phone. Next, I have some great scheduling tips for creating your MCAT study schedule, as well as when you wanna be writing your test. Dedicate a day to plan. 
Make sure that you get all of your resources in one spot and that they're really accessible to you throughout the length of your studying. When you're really stressed and you're really tired from all the studying, you'll really thank yourself for making all of these so easy to access. Then, come up with a realistic timeline of studying to try to finish as many practice questions and as much of their content as possible. I've included my own study schedule for what was realistic for me in the description, but you should make sure to tailor this to your own needs. Want to go faster? Sure, add in a little bit more work every single day. Do you want to slow down the pace? There's no rush. Make sure to tailor it to understand your own study needs and your unique situation. Do whatever you need to succeed. What worked for me might not work for you. Say you're a few weeks into studying, and you find that you're consistently behind schedule and you're falling off track. You might have to readjust your schedule. Ideally, a great study plan is one that you can follow to a T and never fall off track. If you're not keeping up, chances are you didn't realize how much you would have to do or you didn't know that life was gonna be so busy. You should be realistic with yourself and ask yourself, how much can I finish today? Can I still do everything else I wanted to do today? And how will finishing this make me feel? If finishing all your studying for the day is something that is really important, you should be trying to prioritize that and finishing that first before moving on to other things. It really is all about how important studying for the MCAT is to you. On the other hand, if you find that you're always consistently ahead of your study schedule, progressively overload. Add a little bit more work every single day so that you can keep on maintaining that intensity. Life gets in the way. When you're studying, you make a big plan about how you're gonna do things, but there's probably a million different things you didn't account for. When you're studying for this test, it feels really consuming because you're pouring in so much time. But remember that you have other interests too, so you should be taking the time to focus on those as well. I know that I fell behind on my study schedule a lot, and you undoubtedly will too. Make sure to factor in catch-up days so that you can focus on catching up with the content that you're falling behind with, break days to try to focus on the things that you love to do so that you avoid burnout and make sure that you're ready and energized to keep studying, and also review days, so you can review all the topics that you've been studying to try to make sure you're just not passively absorbing it and that's going through your head. Lastly, space your practice. Try to make the most out of all the time you've been given and break up all the material into small, manageable, and digestible chunks. Many, many different studies have shown that even given the same amount of total study time, people that space out their studying tend to, on average, do better than people that do all their studying on a few days before the test. We all know that that's true. If we're consistently studying, we always tend to do better than if we just cram in all the information last second. Of course, that's easy to say, but actually doing it is a lot harder and requires a lot of discipline. But in doing so, you're only making things easier for yourself in the long run. Instead of leaving a massive workload to cram in, in the two days before, you're just doing a little bit every single day, and that's gonna make your life so much easier in the long run. So those were my study tips and my scheduling tips for the MCAT, and I really hope that you took something meaningful out of that. It is really wonderful to have you here. I had a lot of advice from my friends in medical school when I was applying, and I'm really excited to pay that forward to you. That being said, I'm really interested in what you guys want to see in the future, so comment in the video below if you have any great ideas or questions that you want answered. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. That's been your daily dose of Medi Sun, and I'll see you in the next video.